happy coding. Hey there, happy coders. Long time no see. Um, I, back in the day, tried to do a couple of these videos per week, but then with school and all kinds of other stuff happening, um, I just haven't had time. But school is out, and I am trying to test out a couple of new things. So I realized that I've been using my microphone wrong the entire time. Um, and I'm trying this new like thing where I'm down in the corner and this like you can't see my background. I don't know. Feels kind of cool. We're going to see if it actually works as I record a video. And honestly, it's a Sunday afternoon and I just kind of feel like messing around. So here we are. Um, so I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. I've had this idea for a program or for like a sketch uh, for a long time now. And it's just kind of been bouncing around in my brain. And I want to try it out and see what happens. I don't know if it's going to work or if it's going to look cool or or what, but um, we're going to find out. So I spent some time the other night just kind of staring at a piece of graph paper and um, trying to figure something out. So my goal is if I start with an image, say, um, you know, the pixels in an image, and I then go sort of layer by layer in that image and I s rotate each layer. That might sound confusing. I kind of drew it out this way. Maybe this kind of visualization of it makes a little bit more sense where the outermost sort of ring of pixels will rotate. Then the next ring of pixels will rotate all the way down to the center of the, of the image will rotate. This will be like just like to a two by two pixel uh, sort of square that'll rotate. So I, I drew that out here where you start with sort of pixels in a certain configuration and they just kind of rotate around each other. Um, in a three by three case, you know, this pixel will move here, this pixel will move here, this pixel will move here, and then you get this kind of result. Um, and then so on and so forth with like larger um, images so like a four by four this one moves here this one moves here blah 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 blah. so you get this sort of effect where the pixels are sort of spinning and i honestly don't know what this is going to look like at the end of the day um it might not look very interesting my sort of hypothesis is that it won't be quite as simple as like rotating an image by 90 degrees um because if you think about like how how many steps or iterations it takes to rotate the centermost part of the image. It's, you know, only one or two <laughs> um, to, to rotate it. Like every, every turn, this rotates 90 degrees. Um, so it's spinning relatively quickly versus, you know, if you think of an image that might be 500 by 500 pixels, the outermost um, layer of that image, those will just move by one each time, and it'll, I think, be relatively slower, sort of like a merry-go-round. If you're in the middle of a merry-go-round and it's spinning, you're spinning slower than if you're on the outside of that exact same merry-go-round. Again, I actually don't know if it's going to work or if it's going to look cool or if I do it and it's actually not interesting at all, but that's kind of the, the fun of it. Um, then I, I sort of thought through the, the logic and I don't know if this is actually correct or not, but um, I think it's going to involve a for loop that loops through each layer and then probably four for loops inside of that outermost for loop that for each layer, it does sort of the top row, then the right row, then the bottom row, then the left row or not row, but like, you know, line and we're going to see if that works i i actually don't know but we're going to find out um so without further ado um i am going to open up processing i think my guess is that this is going to get kind of cpu intensive and i might end up doing np5 but i just want to test it out and get something working first so i'm going to open up processing so it's been a while since i've used like 
processing instead of p5 so it might take me a little bit to reacquaint myself with it but that's okay um so what do i want to do i want to have like oh this also first off this is super tiny can i make this text bigger uh, uh yeah i'm gonna try to make this text bigger i should have maybe changed my uh, 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 uh. how do you do this <laughs> one second um probably in preferences font size let's make it bigger what's this look like yeah maybe all right <laughs> hopefully y'all can y'all can see that um and then i need to create like a canvas man this is funny i, I haven't done processing in forever so my my brain wants to do p5 now um and i need a, a draw function Okay, and so I know that I am going to want to load some images. That that feels fairly uh, obvious to me. Um, I do have this directory of images that I sort of prepared ahead of time just by downloading a bunch of images that I've taken. Um, so let me move that into my sketch. Let me maybe save my sketch first and call this, I don't know, image spinner. And then I will sort of copy this in there. And that gives me, oh, dragging and dropping a folder is not supported. That's annoying. All right, I'll just do it manually. I'll just move these in here. I think this will work, but we're going to see in a second. Um, so I want to load an image and then do stuff with that image. So just to get something working, I'm going to maybe just say P image image. And then in setup, I'll say image equals load image and then a file name in here. And I think I just called it like image dash one or something or image dash two image dash one dot png let's go with that actually let's go with uh image dash three image dash three i'm doing that because image dash one is a is a bigger image it's a panorama so i want to start with something a little bit more uh standard and then i'll draw my image here so image image zero zero and let's just do that okay yeah let's run this and see what happens and that's annoying it pops up on my other uh, monitor but all right i've got um problem here image 3.png is missing or inaccessible i think i need to put this inside of like a data directory i'm trying to remember my my processing um rules here so all right now it's inside data now will this work no image 3.png is missing um Okay, I'm going to go open up the processing reference and try to remember what uh, what my life is. How do I do this again? So if I look for load image, um, this will tell me what the directory name needs to be, I think. So yeah, PNG is supported. And hmm. The data directory, yeah, I thought that was right. Data, oh, um, right, oh, 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 I need the directory name, images, right, right, right. So I have it inside of uh, data and then images. I actually, now, now that I'm staring at it, maybe I didn't need to do that data part, but whatever. And great, cool, <laughs> off to a great start. Uh, images, image-3.png, image-3, oh, it's a JPEG. This is a JPEG, all right jpeg fine uh run that and okay let me bring this over and hopefully that remembers okay so something wonky is happening where only part of my image is being drawn that might be because it popped up on my other monitor let's run that again okay so my canvas here my window is 500 pixels by 500 pixels and my image itself is larger than that it's what uh probably a thousand by something Let's see, it's 1,000 by 750. So I could maybe um, resize my canvas to be that size. Maybe I'll start with that. And yeah, okay. So now my my image, my window is the exact same size as my image, so I don't have to do any resizing or anything. Eventually, I probably will want to um, resize my image. So 
I'm debating whether I want to do that now or, or wait to do that later. I might as well do it now because then I have the freedom of, of playing with other image sizes without it getting super duper annoying. Um, so let me think about this. Uh, I believe that processing has just like an image dot resize uh, function. So if I have a P image, I'm pretty sure one of these functions is just resize. Yeah, I resize the image and that operates on the image itself. It doesn't like give me a new image, I believe. So let's try that. So if I say maybe um, image.resize and I'm gonna to have to do some math in my head, don't like that. What's 750 divided by two? I think 375 maybe. And I will also maybe size my window to be that 375. And now I should have like a smaller window, but my image sh should be like the, the correct size. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so it's a smaller window, like quite a bit smaller. Um, and my image is still kind of resized the correct way. I could also probably have width and height in here, but that requires that my window and my image are always the same size. And maybe I want a little bit more freedom than that. So I could do, um, you know, something like this, where maybe I want it to be quite a bit smaller, where maybe I divide these by 10. And then in here, I might have width and height. I think I want to stick with this kind of style, because then I can, I can play with it a little bit more uh, later when I have other images. So let me run that. And yeah, it's pixelated. But, um, you know, that's to be expected, since I'm making it tiny and then blowing it back up. I think I can maybe call no stroke or no, no smooth somewhere in here to make it not uh, not blurry like that. Let's try that and see what happens. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it's differently pixelated. Um, oh, I can't zoom in on this monitor, that's annoying. Um, but in any case, I have my, my image and I can resize it and I can now display it sort of at that same, at, at the same size as my window. So now I can maybe increase this back up to, like 1000 and what was this before what's 375 times 2 750 sounds right and sure so it's very pixelated but that'll actually maybe help with what i'm about to start uh doing which is like rotating the image along the sort of edges of of each layer okay so I am drawing my image, and now I want to get into this whole mess with this uh, terrifying looking for loop. Um, so let me just kind of think through this or talk through this. Um, what this for loop does is first, the outermost sort of loop um, loops through the layers in my in my pixel array or in my image. So for example, a two by two image will just have a single layer, um, a three by three or even a four by four both of those will have two layers because there's like the outermost layer and then the innermost layer um, when you start getting up to like five by five then that's one two three layers the third layer is just a single pixel but um you know it's still a layer um you can think of it as like a single pixel sort of rotating um so the the outermost for loop loops over the layers and then for each of those layers it moves the pixels in sort of the top line over by one and it moves the pixels in the right line down by one the bottom line goes to the left and then the left line goes up so i wrote out the first sort of um example of that for the topmost uh some of this is probably off this is just me kind of thinking through it um but i think this is similar to to what i want it's going to get close <laughs> um okay so how many layers will an image have well an image will have it depends on whether the width or height of the image is is smaller Wh whichever one's smaller it'll be half of that number. So if you think of like a number that's, let's say two, two by two, then two divided by two is one, and this is how many layers you have. If it's three, then three divided by two is still one. So I might have an off by one there. I might have to have like divided by two and then ground up 
maybe or maybe i don't care because the middle of most layer won't actually change anything let's think about that let's do five so five divided by two is two well it's two and a half but then uh if if, if i convert that to an integer then it's two and that would work so actually maybe i don't care about um yeah maybe i don't care maybe maybe i can just uh, truncate it like that anyway i'm just kind of thinking through whether this logic is right so let me just write it out and see what happens um so how do i want to do this maybe i'll create a new function like void um i don't want to call it rotate because that's already a function let's call it um like rotate and rotate image and i'll just use this image and fine 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 so what i want to do is figure out how many layers there are so int layers equals the minimum of image.width and image.height and i think that will give me an integer and then i divide that by two and that will give me how many layers i have i think um man it's so funny it's it's been so long since i've written processing that like this java stuff is uh like making my brain hurt a little bit <laughs> it's funny uh and let's just print that out for now let's say um print line layers and i'll just call like rotate image up here rotate rotate image i'm just kind of double checking that this like does anything at all and 18 and why is that that's because this is 50 and this is 37.5 which i think rounds to 37 and then 37 divided by two is what? 18? 18 and a half? Yeah, 18 and a half, which then rounds to 18 down here. It's super tiny, but it's down there. Okay, so I think that's working correctly. Um, also, that's kind of way too tiny. Let's make it uh, 100 by 75 at least. And so now I should get 75 divided by two, I should get like 37 and I do. Okay, cool 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 all right so this this minimum is working i think in dividing by two okay so i'm getting the right number of layers and then i'm going to have a for loop that goes oh, it's so funny i want to keep saying this but like i want to be like oh let i but that's that's the wrong language uh and uh call it layer equals zero um layer is less than or equal to layers we're going to find out in a second uh i might be off by one there but we're going to find out and i'll close it out and now here's where it gets here's where it gets interesting <laughs> uh so now for each layer a layer being like a ring in my image i need to like rotate that ring and i need to do it like one line at a time there might be a mathier way to do all of this but i'm just kind of doing it um i don't know sort of manually so i'm going to kind of stare at the logic i wrote out here oh that's annoying um maybe i'll bring my processing window back and sure so i want to loop over the pixels in the array and move each one one to the right one at a time um so I think to do that, first I need to get the previous color, which is going to be whatever colors in the like upper left corner of the layer. So um, what do I need? I need, is this a color or a P color? I think it's just color, right? <laughs> uh, prev color equals, and then image dot get layer layer, I think. Color does not exist. Why not? Oh, is this lowercase? Right. Okay. So I have my previous color. I think I'm going to need that. And what do I need to do next? Um, right. I need to get like the width of my layer and the height of my layer. Okay. So what is that going to be? That is going to be an integer. And I want to say like layer width equals what? <laughs> uh, so what's calls and rows? I think this is like the width of my image. Yeah, this was the width of my image equals image.width minus 
player times two, is that right? So what I'm doing is if you think about what an image sort of pixel array looks like, let's say I'm, let's say I'm looking at this square here um, and I'm on, well, let's say I'm on this like second layer of pixels and I want to do a couple of things. First, I'm at one, one here. This is my upper left corner. So that's layer, layer. That's why my uh, code here got the color from layer, layer, because it's going to be zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three. It's like the upper left corner of my current layer. And then I need to get the layer width, which in this case is going to be, you know, one, two, three. And that is the width of my whole image minus my layer times two because I have a border on the left side and on the right side. So here, let's say I'm on layer one. Well, you know, this is layer zero, layer one. My width of my layer here is going to be three because it's the whole thing, one, two, three, four, five minus layer times two, layers one times two is two, five minus two is three. So that's what I'm doing there. And then if I was down a layer, it would be, you know, minus um, four and uh, that would give me the, the, the width of sub subsequent layers. And that's gonna tell me how, how far I need to um, loop to get to move like that first line of pixels. I realize that I'm probably not making any sense because a lot of this is me like trying to explain stuff that I thought through on this piece of paper, but hopefully you'll see what I mean when I, when I actually start, uh, start uh, moving the pixels around. So then I need to do the same thing for layer height equals image dot height minus layer times two. All right, so now I have my layer width and my layer height. I can use those to, um, move my pixels. So I'm going to just try to get that first line working, which is this sort of gross looking line of code here. Um, okay, so I'm running out of screen space, but let's put it there. I also don't actually know if this is correct. So one thing at a time. Um, I want to loop from, I will resize all of this in a second, but I want to loop from a like column. So I'm going to say like into column equals layer. So I'm starting at like an X position. It's not exactly an X position. That's why I'm using the term column. Um, but it's going to start at whatever my layer is. So if I'm at on layer zero, it's going to start at zero. If I'm on layer one, it's going to start at one. It's going to start like it's going to skip over the first layer number of pixels. So I start sort of on that like inner ring. And then I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to loop until column is no longer less than what? Image dot width minus layer. Um, could I just use layer width here? So I could just use like, there's probably some basic al algebra here that could simplify this, but um, I could say image dot width minus layer. So yeah, so I'm going to loop until my pixel is like to the right edge of my layer. I could probably say layer plus layer width here, but it doesn't. It's it's all the same thing. Um, it's all just algebra. I think <laughs> he says that as he has never tested this code. And then I'm just going to increase by one each time, each step of this uh, for loop. And now here's where I move my color over by one. And how do I do that? I say um, my next color. So I'm going to say color next color equals image.get. And here's where I want my um, X position to be what? Uh, I think this needs to be column. And then it's layer. I think this is kind of an X and this is kind of a Y. I think that I was wrong here because I was thinking in terms of an array, but um, I think this will work. And then I need to call what? I need to call image.set um, of column and layer 
to my previous color. And I think I'm messing this up. Image.set. I need to look that up. What's that look like? Uh, is this P image? No, it's resize. So what's set? Set. Set is X, Y color. Oh, so I might be right, actually. Um, X, Y color yeah maybe and then finally i need to say prev color equals next color because i'm moving my color over by one and i'm saying oh wait remember that this was the the old color um and now that i'm staring at this i think i need this to be a plus one because i don't want to start in the upper left because i've already sort of stored that color here so this is the upper left color, and I say, hey, remember the previous color. Remember the color of the pixel in the upper left corner. And then I start one pixel over, and then what I do is I say, hey, remember this color, and then set this pixel to whatever your previous color was, and then keep remembering that current color. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to try this and just see what happens, see what breaks. So when do I call this? I don't call this yet. Let's call this from like a mouse pressed or something. Mouse pressed, just so I can kind of see it one iteration at a time. My guess is that this won't do anything, and I'm probably going to have to debug it and um, be confused and scared, but that's, that's okay. So let's run this. Okay, so I want to sort of squint at what's happening in like the top row of, of pixels. So if I press my mouse, what happens? Oh, it does do something. Okay, something weird is happening. <laughs> um, where it's like there's, I don't know, a triangle or something of my image. And I think I know why that's happening actually no this is right maybe <laughs> because i'm never moving my pixels down so yeah what's happening is for um each layer the top line of that layer is moving over by one it's, it's moving by, over by one every time i click which means it's, it's going to keep going to the right. Now, the next part of my logic is going to say, move the lines down as well, uh, so that when they like go off the right edge, they actually move down instead of just going off the screen. But I don't know, this by itself is kind of trippy. Um, and then, yeah, okay, so here's, here's what's happening. I wish I could zoom into this on this uh, monitor. There's uh, not a good way to do that. Um, but if you look at this rightmost edge, this is where that right edge of pixels begins. So if I click a bunch of times, it'll eventually just kind of go off the screen. And yeah, that looks kind of kind of fun. Um, you know, it's not the effect I was going for, but I could imagine doing something with this, maybe converting this into like a uh, like a square or something, um, square of images or of colors. That might be cool. Um, my computer's also getting really upset. I don't know if you can hear that fan, but uh, <laughs> between this like green screen thing and this, it's not happy, but that's okay. Um, okay, so I think this is working, shockingly enough. Um, my top line, anyway, is working. So now I need to get that right edge working, and then I'll get the bottom edge and then the left edge, and that'll be kind of how I think through this. So this is as far as I got with my sort of taking notes to myself and thinking it through, I was like, eh, yeah, I probably have the pattern. Um, spoiler alert, I don't. <laughs> uh, so we're going we're gonna to work through that together. Um, but I think it's going to follow a very similar pattern where I have a for loop that moves colors, in this case, down by one. So I do have my previous color, and it's going to be set to the pixel in the upper right corner yeah <laughs> uh so i think i can do basically this exact same thing so what do i want to do i want to say for int row and now i'm thinking in terms of like a y value uh, i don't know why i call it row i do that because like when i'm dealing with pixels it's not exactly x y it's row column or column row but 
it doesn't really matter. You could call this Y if you really wanted to. Um, and this is going to be very similar. It's going to say layer plus one, I think. Uh, yeah, because I'm now, I was at zero or I was at one and now I'm moving down one. Okay, yeah, it makes sense to me, I think. Row is going to be less than image.height minus layer and then row plus plus, okay? And I think this logic is going to be really similar. Next color equals image.get uh, layer row and then image.set. Um, layer row prev color and then prev color equals next color. So now I hope <laughs> that when I click my my image sort of has has a rotating effect for the top and the right. Um, likely it won't work and then something will break, but we'll cross that bridge when I get there. All right, so I'm going to click. And I'm going to just kind of stare and see what happens. And I'm also going to stare like, especially at this sort of the upper right edge of my, um, of my layers. And this is not what I expected. <laughs> uh, something goofy is happening. Um, so I'm, o I'm over here on the left edge and I need to kind of start over because I'm kind of confused by what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm going to stare at this left edge, which is doing something. What is it doing? So it's moving my left edge down instead of my right edge. So I, I'm guessing that I'm off by some, some threshold. So let me stare at that. Yeah, it's doing... It's doing to the left edge what I thought it would do to the right edge. Okay, so let me stare at this for a second. So if I think in terms of row, um, I'm getting, I'm starting at layer plus one, which I think is right. Because if I'm at zero, I want to start at one. If I'm one, I start at one, I start at two. And then I'm going until the bottom of my, of my layer. Okay. This just gets the color, and I bet this is where I'm off. So if I set layer row, I don't want to set layer row here. I want to set the rightmost edge. So this x value needs to be what? Is this layer, hmm, is this layer width? Let's see. This is going to be... It's the right edge. So it's actually image dot width minus layer because I'm starting over on the right edge. I guess I should use this hand. I'm starting on the right edge. I'm not going to be able to use my left hand while talking. It, it, it's my right. Um, I'm starting on the right edge and then I'm subtracting one for each layer. So I think this makes sense. So I start out on the rightmost edge, then I'm or to the left by one, to the left by two, to the left by three. Okay. I'm guessing this will work. All right. Okay, I'm going to stare at it again. And this time I'm a little bit more skeptical. I'm just going to stare at the whole thing. All right, let's look. And uh, no, <laughs> that's still not doing what I thought it would. And in fact, it's doing less than it was before. Although something weird is happening over here. That's not what it's supposed to look like. Is it already wonky? I haven't even clicked yet. Hmm. I want to comment all of this out because I'm getting suspicious of myself. Yeah. Wait, what? Rotate image. Oh, because I call it once in setup. Okay, let me get rid of this. So I'm doing something weird, I think. Um, we're going to look in a second, but let me kind of stare at this as as I go. Okay, so this is what it starts out as. And let me click. And yes, yeah, something weird happens immediately, which means that something is off. Okay, so what is it? Image dot width minus layer is the X position. 
oh, I think I need this to change as well, right? Because layer is zero. Oh yeah, I need the same thing here. I need the same exact thing here. Image dot width minus layer. So I'm getting the next color. Yeah, okay, this, this kind of feels right to me. All right, let's try again. If I click, yeah, I think that worked. So now when a pixel reaches the right edge, it then starts to go down. I think there's maybe something wonky here where if I stare at a pixel, it's kind of not moving. So I'm guessing that maybe I have an off by one, but I think this is generally doing the right thing. Why do I have an off by one though? Um, I think it's because I think this needs to be less than or equal to because I want to go all the way to that rightmost edge. Um, although now I'm staring at that, that doesn't feel right because image width minus layer with my first layer is going to be the entire width, which is wrong. I want that to be, I think this is going to break actually, right? No, it doesn't break. Okay. Wait, actually that worked, I think. So wait, okay. I think that did fix it, but I actually don't know why it fixed it. <laughs> Um, because if I think of the image dot width, let's say the image width is 500. Um, if I start at column equals layer plus one, so I start one off because I start with this, then I go all the way to column equaling 500, but there is no 500, 500 pixel. Um, because there's only zero to 499. So what do I say? I say next color equals image dot get all on layer. I don't know. Part of me is like, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It works. It works. But that doesn't feel right to me. Um, I'm also not using these variables at all. I, okay. <laughs> Image dot width minus layer less than or equal to. What happens if I get rid of this one? I think it'll go back to being broken. Yeah, so I have my um, I don't know, the pixels are getting stuck up there. Maybe it doesn't make sense for the zeroth one, but maybe it makes sense for subsequent ones. So let's go with um let's say my layer is one now. So I'm like one 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 pixel into the into the effect so my column starts out as layer which is one plus one so it's on the second pixel zero one two i think that makes sense and then i go less than or equal to image dot width which is going to be 500 minus layer which is 499 right so I actually don't want it to be less than or equal to. Um, I'm a little suspicious of this, but for the sake of not making the most boring video on the planet, I'm not going to stare at it for much longer. Maybe I'll come back to that later and be like, oh, okay, that's why. Um, but for now, I think it is working. Or is it? <laughs> now that I'm staring at it, I'm like, wait, maybe, maybe not, which maybe is related to that. Um, it's doing maybe the right thing. It's hard to tell with this kind of pixelated thing. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to create a new, like, kind of fake image. And it's going to be real obvious. Uh, so image properties, let's make this what? Like, I don't know, 10 by seven, like something real small. And then I'm going to, um, can I zoom in? Can I zoom more in? No, I can't. That's super annoying. Um, it's probably a better way to do this, but I just want to make like a dummy image that I can test out on. Um, I could have sworn there was a way to zoom in more, but whatever. So I'm going to just kind of add some random dots and stuff on a couple of layers, maybe some green dots, 
yeah, maybe green dots, maybe orange dots, and I want to be able to stare really hard at this and um, get a sense of exactly what's happening. And this is actually why before I, I set up my logic so that it would work with any size image because I knew I would have to do something like this. And sure, good enough. Let's call this, um, whoops. Um, where is that? That's over here. Here. Data, let's call this um, test image. Sure. So I've got test image.png and let's um let's load that instead. Test image.png and image, I'm not going to resize it. I'm going to keep it at that sort of 10 by 7. And then uh, let's maybe resize this and let's just see what this looks like. Yeah, okay. So I've just got like some huge pixels so that I can really stare at exactly what's happening. So I want this purple pixel to move down by one. I want this green pixel to move over by one. This red pixel should move over by one. Maybe I should have started with this, but let's just see what happens. So yeah, no, that's not doing the right thing. The, um, the top, the, the top parts are the, the horizontal movement is, is working. I think this, this red will move over by one, this purple will move over by one, this red will move over by one, I think. Yeah. So that's working, but going down is not working at least. I think transitioning from moving right to moving down is not working. So um, here, this row here, red, blue, orange, that will move down. Okay, cool. That does move down. But this purple doesn't move down, or does it? No, purple does not move down. And this green moves over one, but then does not move down. But if I keep clicking, Eventually something happens. I don't know where that, okay, let's pay attention to that red one. This red one, let's pay attention. And that's at zero, one, two. That's on the second layer. So boom, 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 boom. And now I think it should move over because zero, one, two. Now it should move down. No, it doesn't, okay. <laughs> um, so I think my original logic was right um, with the less than, I think this, uh, This here should be a less than that. That feels right to me. So let's see what this changes. Now I'm staring at this. Maybe this is wrong. Would that change anything? We're going to find out. So I don't know. I'm just going to stare at it and see what happens. So no, it's not doing the right thing. It's still moving to the right. That's correct. But this purple one, what do these guys do? Do these move down? No. Well, okay. They do, but... Uh, there's something weird that happens in the bottom right corner. I'm not worried about that because that's part of the same problem, I think. But like this red one and this blue one, they do move down. Purple one still doesn't. And green does not. Let's see. Does anything do the right thing? Let's pay attention to this red one. So now it should start moving down. And it doesn't. Instead, it moves over. But I don't even know if that's the correct red pixel. Could be, you know something different, but no, I kind of think it is. All right, so let's stare at this and let's stare at my logic. Also, let's just try to make this a less than, see what happens. I don't think this should do it, but who knows? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let me think really hard about this. Um, and let me get this up so I can kind of talk through it in terms of these pixels. So, if, We're here. Let's say layer is zero. Okay. And I start out at, let's go to this for loop. So my column equals layer plus one. So it's here. It's this red one. And I say, get this red pixel, store that in next color, set this color to whatever was over here. In this case, it's just white or blank. And then say previous color equals whatever this originally was. That's this, this red value. Um, 
Okay, so I think that like by itself is working, but then let's think about what happens when I get over here. So my image width, this is the full width. So it's not zero based here. So in this case, this will be 10. Um, whereas the pixel, like the array indexes will be zero based. So I, I shouldn't go up to 10. I should go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so image dot width is 10 minus layer. I think I need a minus one here because image dot width is 10 and I'm on the zeroth layer. So my last, I don't know, uh, less than image dot width minus layer. So I go less than 10. So I will include nine there. Okay, that seems like it should work. And I think it does, right? Because the topmost, is this behaving? Does this turn green? Yeah, okay. So my logic for moving to the right is, is correct, I think. So all of these behave. Let's check out this purple one. Does this do the right thing? No, it doesn't. It does not actually. Wait, no, it does. It does. It does. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> confusing myself, but yeah, okay. It does. So it should go to the next one. And then it's like, it, it has completed its job. It has gone all the way to the right. And then weird stuff starts happening. Okay. So I'm suspicious of this for loop now. So staring at it again. All right. So now I'm looking at row. Row equals layer plus one, which is let's say I start out at zero, um, it's going to be one. Row is less than image dot height minus layer. I think I've sort of convinced myself that that's correct based on what I did before. And okay, so here's where it gets weird. I bet I need a minus one or something here. Oh man, I, I bet I do. Okay, 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 okay. Oh man, I can feel it. I can feel a minus one coming on. All right. What I'm doing is let me first off get this. Uh, so I've moved, let's say I've moved my, my green one into position. So my previous color is green. All right. So then I say row equals layer plus one, which is this one. And I'm going to loop all the way to the, to the bottom. Um, fine. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to say my next color equals, yeah, and here's where it's going to get dumb or here's where I made my mistake, image dot width, which is 10, minus layer, which is zero, is 10. And like I was saying before, my array pixels are zero based, so this needs to be minus one. And I bet I need a minus one here. That's super annoying. I bet that fixes it, but let's find out. So now I'm gonna stare at this purple one. That's victory. All right, weird stuff's going to happen down here because I haven't done anything with that yet, but let's just kind of look at it. I think that's right. So blue is going to move over. Okay, now blue is going to move down. Okay, now purple is going to move over. Okay, now purple should move down at the same sort of rate as these. This, these three should move down together. Oh boy. All right, well, that was like 30 minutes of banging my head against uh, math to uh, figure out that I needed a minus one. That, that feels, that feels right. That feels, uh, that feels correct. <laughs> All right. But now that I have that famous last words, I think that the rest should work. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so what do I want to do? I could add my, my next for loop for like the bottom row. I'm kind of tempted to check out an image to like a real image to see like what this effect is kind of looking like. I, I, I truly don't know if it's going to be interesting or not. So let's just try it. Let's say, what was this image three JPEG. And let's just see what it, what it ends up doing, uh, sort of in those two, the two ways we have it. Oh, that's going to be huge. Let's, uh, let's go back to 175. Um, so as I click, 
Um, maybe. <laughs> like I said, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's going to end up being interesting. I think it's like algorithmically doing the right thing. So if I stare at, I don't know, any particular pixel, I think they are doing the right thing. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be interesting. Let's try a couple things. Let's do like rotate, rotate image. This is where it might get real gross. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. And let's see what happens if I don't resize it. Oh, I'm already not resizing it. Whoops. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And I can kind of imagine like, once I get the other two parts working, you know, maybe it'll do something interesting. I don't know. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, all right, let's go back to that test image just so I can, um, you know, work from something that I can actually squint at. Uh, what did I call it? Test image.jpg, I think. And, oops, nope, that's not right. Um, test image.jpg, wasn't it? Oh, it was a PNG. All right, so now I'm back to having it click. Okay. So now I want to do my bottom row. And this is going to be very similar. I'm going to have to stare at the, the minus ones, though, because that's what that's what bit me. Um, so I'm going to have a very similar for loop. Let's say for int, I'm going to call this column again, equals what? So it's going to be like a reverse for loop that starts on the rightmost edge and then goes back. Um, or decreases by one each time. So what is this going to be? This is going to be um, image.width minus layer minus one, I think. <laughs> uh, so if I'm, say, at 10, I want my column to be nine. If I'm at, if I'm over here and I'm still in the zero width layer, um, my last pixel is nine. So 10 minus zero minus one gives me nine. And that kind of has symmetry with, with what I was doing um, here because I'm on the right edge. Right. Okay. So I start out on the right edge and then I go until what column is greater than, do I need to go greater than or greater than or equal to? I think I need to go greater than or equal to because I want to include that leftmost edge. And that's going to be what? I think that's just layer. And then column minus minus. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to find out. So the, the pattern at least is going to be the exact same thing where I get the next color from my image. Image.get what? Um, X is just going to be column and Y is going to be, um, my image height minus layer minus one, I think <laughs> I'm mostly going off of just kind of pattern matching at this point. And then I want to say set, um, to what? I think that same thing, right? Column image dot height minus layer minus one to prev color, and then prev color equals next color. So I kind of navigated by vibe there, but let's just kind of stare at it and see what happens. So now I'm looking at the top, the right, and the bottom. Let's see what happens. Ooh, ooh, I think that worked. So I'm not looking at what happens when it goes to the left because I haven't done that yet, but let's just follow a couple of these pixels. So this blue one should go down. This orange one should go left. And it doesn't. That's not what happened. <laughs> so I have an off by one error again. Orange should go down. It doesn't. So I'm doing something weird here. Um, where it's just kind of skipping over this rightmost edge, which, you know, may, might be what I want, but it's not. Um, but I think overall it is working. It's just there's a boundary condition or something that's something wonky is happening 
between here and here. So I'm saying column equals image dot width minus layer minus one. I think that's right. So if I'm at 10, if I'm at the, like, if I, just to start out, image dot width is 10, minus layer is zero, minus one is nine. So my column is nine, which I think is right. So what do I do? I say next color equals image dot get column. which is right. And then image dot height minus layer minus one. Maybe this is where I'm, where I'm, where I'm messing this up. So image dot height minus layer minus one image dot height. No, I, th I think that should work. So what's happening here? Maybe I'm actually messing something up here. Maybe. Let's see. Man, I don't know if this is fun to watch, but it's uh, certainly different than how I expected this to go. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I always knew it was going to be a bunch of staring at plus ones, minus ones. Um, let's watch a different pixel. Let's watch something inside it. Let's watch this red pixel. So this point should go down. Yeah, okay, so it's for all of them. And then I guess these are just kind of in the middle most um, row, which they, they should not move. So I think they're doing the right thing. But there's just something weird when I go from the right edge to the bottom edge. So let's be suspicious of this. I move my rows down. And that, maybe this is the part that's not working. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, let's be suspicious of this, uh, of this for loop. So, row equals layer plus one. I think that's right because the, you know, the beginning works. Okay. And then I'm going to row is less than image dot height minus layer. I mean, that has to be right, doesn't it? <laughs> what happens if I don't have this for loop? I don't remember. So I'm going to look at this orange pixel. So it works. Without it. Oh, you know what? I have a theory. Maybe. I don't know if I have a theory yet. So it is working. So that's working. I set my... I set it correctly. I set my... I set the value right. So I do leave it in the correct state. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh, man. Okay. All right. I know what's happening. Um... Here, I'm starting at layer plus one because I already moved that pixel. Um, so here, I mean, spoiler, this is going to be a minus two, I think. But the reason for that is, <laughs> uh, let's say that I've moved my orange pixel down. That means that this pixel, this bottom right pixel, I've already done the thing I need to do for it. Um, so I actually need to start over here. I need to start like one to the left of this rightmost pixel. This rightmost pixel is image.width minus layer minus one. So this pixel is image.width minus layer minus two. That's the whole thing, I think. So let's stare at this and see what happens. Uh, let's watch this orange pixel here. That moves down. And now it should move left. Cool, blue, red. All right, cool. Let's watch this red pixel. Uh, what should it do? 
Actually, let's watch both of these. Purple should move over one. Red should move down one. And it does. Okay, now red should move down one. Purple should move down one. And it does. Now left sh red should move left. And it does. Okay, so I think I have all of them working except for the leftmost edge. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so wait, why did that orange pixel stay? Ah, oh, it's just the leftmost edge thing. All right. Um, I'm going to wait until I have this uh, this last bit of logic figured out to sort of reveal it to myself with a real image. And we're going to see if it's interesting or not. <laughs> All of this for it to not look cool. That'd be tragic. Um, okay, so what do I want to do? I want to create another for loop. And it's actually going to be kind of the reverse of my first for loop. Um, or wait, my, no, no, my second for loop, right. Um, but I'm not going to stare at it too much because I'm already going to have an off by one error. So let's just, let's just start from scratch so that I can sort of think through it. So I'm on the like leftmost edge here. So let me get this into a position that is manageable. And yeah, it's not going to work because I don't have the logic for it yet, but whatever. Um, this is me look like that. All right. So I'm going to loop um, the rows and I'm going to say int row equals. And I think there's actually going to be some similarities to what I did, you know, in all of the previous for loops actually, but um, I'm starting at the bottom, which is going to be similar to starting on the right edge. So I'm starting from the bottom. So this is going to be image dot height minus layer minus two, because I want to start one up from the bottom or, you know, one up from the pixel that I already handled. <laughs> this video is probably not very interesting because there's so much stuff that I'm like visualizing in my brain that I'm not doing a good job of like explaining. So I apologize, but hopefully it's worth it. And then I'm going to loop. This is going to be another backwards loop where I'm subtracting. So I'm going to loop while row is what greater than or equal to probably layer here probably the same thing and then row minus minus all right and so same pattern color next color equals image dot get image dot get and i am realizing eh, we're going to get there when i get there <laughs> realizing there might be an issue in the top left corner but Let's just see. All right, so what am I doing? Image.get the column is going to be layer. And the row is just going to be row, I think. Yeah, I think. <laughs> and then image.set uh, layer row brief color. And then prev color equals next color. Okay. I think. Let's see. Run this. And okay, now I'm going to stare. I'm just going to stare at it, the, the whole thing, um, especially maybe this left edge. So I'm going to follow this blue square and this, this orange square and this green square. All right, let's just look. Orange square should move up. It does. Okay. Blue square should move up and green square should move to the left. They do. Green square should move up. Actually, all of these should move up. They do. Okay, cool. So I think this is actually working. Let's pay attention to this corner here. Green moves up. Green should move up again. And it does. Ooh, okay. They should both move to the right. And they do. Okay, let's watch red square. Red should move up. And it does. Okay. Orange should move up. And it does. Okay, let's let's keep let's keep clicking. I think this is working. So let's pay attention here. We've got purple and purple. They should both move up. Now, this one should move to the right, and this one should move up. And it does. I think this is working. So let me just stare at this and look for, look for oddities. So these are staying still because they're just in the center. They're like the center of the merry-go-round. They're not moving at all. Um, that's because it's seven. So zero, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's nothing for this to rotate around so it's just the center and that's fine and I think that's working so this 
middle row. Let me kind of stare at this. Yeah, I think this is I think this is right. So I'm just kind of staring at one pixel at a time and just making sure that it does the right thing. And I think they all are. Okay, cool. So then, moment of truth. <laughs> all of this was in the hope that it's interesting when I throw a real image into it. So what did I call this? Image 3.jpg. And... Let's say, mm, let's just do it. Let's just say rotate image. And yeah, I can keep mouse pressed in there. It won't hurt anything. And let's just see how mad my computer gets when I do all of this uh, 60 times a second. Let's see. <laughs> um interesting this is not at all what i expected it to look like <laughs> i kind of like it but it's not at all what i thought it would be what that which is totally great um and from here, I have other questions, like what would happen if I did a square image? What would happen if, um, you know, with other sizes um, or like other kind of designs or whatever? Um, also, I don't know if this is an optical illusion, but like it feels like it's rotating in like in two ways. I don't know how to explain that, but like everything's rotating in clockwise, but then it feels like the shape itself is like rotating to the left. I don't know if that's just an optical illusion. Um, I also wonder what happens if I speed it up. So this might break my computer, but whatever. Um, let's speed it up by like a hundredfold. Um, and I don't need this. I need, let's say that, okay. This might break, let's, let's see what happens. Yeah, okay, it's gonna break. The frame rate at least is pretty horrible but that's okay. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe like eventually it like, I don't know, reforms itself somehow, like it goes into a cycle that like the picture comes back, but nope, um, which is fine, but all right, that's... Uh... <laughs> my uh my screen capture thing just yelled at me because uh my gpu is uh really upset okay all right sorry um all right let's try a couple of things what happens if i put that resize back in and let's take this down a notch yeah it just kind of goes wild okay so it never comes back is the kind of thing i'm i'm looking for and you can kind of see that the middle there is uh stay input okay 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 all right let me get rid of this and eh, let me let me comment this out i might bring it back later so yeah i mean if i think about it in terms of like the lines, if I try to ignore the image itself, I think it's doing the right thing. Like if I follow this, like, I don't know, this blue pixel that kind of stands out, it's doing the right thing. And it's, it's not at all what I expected, but that's, you know, that's part of the fun of creative coding is you can never really know ahead of time. Um, Cool.
yeah, not at all what I expected. All right, let's let's throw a couple of other other, other images at it. Um, let's see. Let's try image eleven. And let's just see. <laughs> it's funny because I would really, I would have expected that it would sort of reformulate itself. But I guess this is, I guess this is kind of what I was saying before, where it's like a merry-go-round, where the middle is moving, well, in theory, slower, but actually it's kind of a reverse merry-go-round. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a reverse merry-go-round, actually. Uh, because, let me take it back to the uh, test image, and that's a PNG, right? Um, let me take it back to this. So, let me, what, sh what should I do here? Let's slow it down. Let's slow the frame rate down to like, I don't know, one. Uh, whoops, frame rate. Yeah, okay. So, if I think about... Maybe this is a bad example because it's like 10 by 7. Maybe I should have used like a more square image. But like if I think about like this purple square and how long does it take for that purple square to go around the merry-go-round compared to like one on the the top so actually let me just count so let me wait until this this actually let's go red square okay red square when it reaches the top left actually no it's purple square oh god okay purple square okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen okay it takes 14 steps for it to get around the around the merry-go-round around the layer that it's in and then compare that to i don't know this orange square one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so in the time that it takes the innermost layer to go around the layer, the outermost layer has only gone halfway. And this is for a tiny image. Um, so for bigger images, which are like a thousand pixels, um, you can think of the thousandth layer being so much faster than the outermost layer. Um, so if I look at, I don't know, my trusty B picture here, um, Oh, that's gross. Okay, fine. Um, this is, you know, a thousand pixels. Uh, so if I think about the pixels that are up here versus the picture, the pixels that are down it, towards the center of this flower, the flower is going to sort of rotate around that layer much faster um, than the pixels up here, which is exactly what I was going for, actually. Um, I just didn't know what it looked like ahead of time, which is which is kind of cool. So let me go back to that uh, that B picture now that I've sort of thought through that a little bit better. Um, image eleven. Dot JPEG, and let's just uh, let's just look at it and let's take the frame rate back up. So like compare what's happening to the middle of the flower to what's happening sort of at the top or you know at the outer edges of the flower. So see how much faster the middle part is like circling around compared to what's happening out here. It's going to take these pixels so much longer to go around the whole image, which is why I think if you kind of look at it, the flower sort of has this like the outer edges are sort of left behind over time. 
Um, so they kind of smear a little bit um, compared to like what's happening here is faster. It's just going around the, the circle um, or the center more like revolutions per time frame, which I think explains the, the effect. So yeah, it's not what I expected it to look like, but I didn't know what to expect. Um, so that's, that's kind of fun. All right, let me just kind of throw a couple more images at it and see what happens. So this is where I could spend, like probably will spend the rest of my day just messing around, but let's just play with it. So let's just try image four. <laughs> it's kind of trippy looking and yeah over time it's just gonna like the center is going to be um mixed up more i guess i'm kind of curious what this one looks like over time because like eventually the whole ground the ground is going to cover like the whole outer edge no that's not true <laughs> it's, it's so hard to think about um And it's funny because it like it looks like a spiral, but it's actually not. It's not a spiral. Uh, it, these are just boxes. Uh, these are layers. So it's kind of an optical illusion. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all right, I figure if you are still with me, then you are into it. Um, so I'm going to just keep playing around for a little bit. I'm going to do each of these images. I could maybe speed it up. Let me put this for loop back. Um, my computer's going to get mad at me again, but I want to speed it up by at least a little bit. It's so funny like that it ends up being like a spiral, even though it's not. It's not actually a spiral. I wonder why that is. There's probably some logical reason that it like ends up looking like a spiral, even though it's not. But I don't know. My, my brain is shutting down. So if you know why it ends up looking like a spiral, if you can explain that to me, I'm, I'm all ears. Can I go up to 10? Will it yell at me? No, I think, uh, I think five or less than five maybe is as fast as it's going to go with, um, with uh, the size of image that I have. I could decrease the size of my image as well. So, you know, there's some stuff I could play with. But first off, I just want to keep playing with, with the images themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I do like image dot resize. Let me like split them, like make them just divide them by two image dot height divided by two. And then that will let me go faster. Maybe. Yeah. All right. That one's kind of goofy. I don't know how I feel about that one. Let's try image eight. That's an airplane. <laughs> It's like it's being like blended up. Yeah, eventually it just kind of turns into like you you can't tell what this was. Um, actually, let's I want to take like a screen grab of it. I just want to see sort of what's it look like if it's being still. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you have no you you can't look at this and be like, oh, that used to be an airplane. You just you have no idea. It's kind of cool. Um, all right, I'm gonna kind of go through these and then and then I'll talk through like some next steps that you might play with. Um, 
I wish I could zoom in a little bit more so that you could see like what's happening in the center because I think that that kind of makes it a little bit more obvious that like the center is moving so much faster than the than the outer edge. If you think about how long it takes for a pixel to like make a full revolution because this is a shorter path. So maybe instead of a merry-go-round, I should have done I should have used like a track as an analogy. So you know like a track has like multiple lanes in it and picture that uh, there's a track that has a thousand lanes in it the outermost track or lane in the track is going to be bigger than the innermost track so if you're running around you'll have less distance to cover if you're closer to the center than if you have to run the whole way around the track so if you're moving at the same speed which all of these pixels are they're moving by one every time um the closer you get to the center, the the faster you're going to appear to go because you're going around the center uh, more often or or um, not at a higher speed, but at like it'll look faster. I don't know. I'm not explaining that very well, but um, hopefully by now you know what I mean. Uh, let's try this kitty cat. And I think that might be the last. Yeah, there's a couple more. Oh, no, kitty cat. Where'd you go? Um, let me slow this back down to like one. Yeah, it's funny. Like each time that it like hits a corner, it gets a little more stretched out because the outermost pixels just take a little longer to get there. So watch this, watch the cat's eye. So it gets a little stretched out gets pretty stretched out and after like the third one now it's like barely recognizable and yeah then it's just colors um so it's it's the cool effect i think all right i'm gonna do this last one image 12 <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. I like it. I I think I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna maybe I'll close by how big are you? You're big. You're like three thousand by four thousand. Um, let's just do like six hundred, eight hundred, six hundred, eight hundred. Uh, this is kind of meta, but what I'm doing is, um. I am going to apply the algorithm that I wrote on this piece of paper to the piece of paper. We're going to see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. That fills me with some, some amount of joy. Let me make that a little bit smaller because that image started out huge. And yeah all right this is this is meta but that's fun and what if i speed this up yeah it just stretches out like every at every corner until it's until it's just colors and unrecognizable all right i think i think that's i think that's a success i think i'm about done with that let me change some of this back um yeah is this the b i think this is my b okay so to summarize if i can let me try um, what I did was, first off, I've had this idea in my brain forever. I don't know why. I've just been thinking about it for for a long time, but I just haven't had any time to like sit down and play with it until, until today. So thanks for hanging out while I did that. Um, I thought through, you know, some examples because I was like trying to get at like the math of it. Um, and I, I did this away from the computer. I did this like literally on a piece of paper, which I took a picture of, which is what you're looking at here. Um, but just to think through it, I was thinking in terms of like rows and columns. And 
honestly, I got like the pattern down and I got a feel for it, but I didn't finalize like exactly what numbers to use, which eh, came back to bite me. But I don't know if bite is the right word there because I always knew that it was going to happen. Um, but I had to think pretty carefully about some of those like plus one minus one issues. Um, but at the end of the day, it works. So the way this whole thing works is I have a outer for loop that loops through each sort of ring in the in the image in the in the array, however you want to think about it. Um, you know, starting at zero zero one one two two three three, starting at that upper left corner. And I actually never used these variables because I think I just did the math like sort of myself, but whatever. Um, and I started out by getting the color in that upper left corner. And then I have a for loop that moves the colors one to the right. I have a for loop that moves the colors down, down one. I have a for loop that moves the colors to the left. Then I have a color uh, for loop that moves the colors up. There's probably a smarter way to do this. There's probably a mathy way to say like, for this x y coordinate what should its color be I, I don't know there's probably a way to do it but i just kind of thought through it like manually like brute force style but hey it works so that's what matters at the end of the day so from here if you are thinking of playing around with this if this looks fun to you if this looks interesting um, one thing you might do that's pretty pretty easy to do is throw your own images at it um, you know, I, I came up with some that I have taken, but what does a selfie look like? Um, what does a picture of, of you um, rotated a thousand steps? What's that look like? And maybe that can be an interesting sort of way to uh, generate like a profile picture or something um, or like a phone background or, you know, whatever. Um, you could maybe, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, but you know, take an image of your house and then send it through this and print it out. And there's a cool piece of art or something, or maybe it's like a housewarming present for someone who just moved. I am moving or hoping to move. So that's why that's on my mind, but whatever. Um, you could also maybe play with the idea of maybe different layers move by different speeds. So right now, everything's moving by one. I'm just always moving the pixel one to the right. Um, it wouldn't be too hard to say, um, maybe these outer layers, maybe they move faster, actually, so that they maybe stay caught up and don't have that smearing effect. Maybe it would look different. Um, it definitely would look different, but how would it look different? I actually don't know. Um, so that would be a really fun thing to play with as well. Um, the other thing, I don't know, you could maybe think about like applying image filters. So I have a couple of videos about like image filters where um, you take a pixel and then you change its color somehow. Um, yeah, I'm getting yelled at again by my, uh, my, my video uh, software over there because my computer's about to melt. Um, anyway, all I'm doing is moving the pixels, but maybe they get uh, brighter over time, or maybe like every time they they cross a threshold, maybe they like randomly change color just by a little bit so that over time it not only mixes, but it also kind of blends together. Maybe, I don't know, lots of things that you, that you could play with. Um, I don't know, I'm staring at it and it looks kind of like a maze. So maybe turn this into a maze. I don't know. I, there's plenty of things that you could do. And I definitely encourage you to, uh, to get creative with it. Um, for me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed a bunch of images into it and see what looks cool and maybe make a GIF out of it and probably post those on Mastodon and stuff. Um, it's kind of, kind of what I'm probably going to end up doing with it, but you could take it and, and run. Um, so I will leave a link to the full code in the description and would love to hear uh, from you if you end up taking this and doing something interesting with it. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching me. I am an hour and a half into this video, so thanks for sticking around if you are still here. Um, I would love to hear from you, so if you leave a comment, I will absolutely see it and reply to it. And better yet, if you want to come say hello on the Happy Coding Forum, this is where I generally hang out. 
So um, if you come to happycoding.io and then click up here, uh, the forum link, and then you can post here either your own screenshots or your own takes um, on, on the code. That would be amazing to see. Uh, I'm also on Mastodon, so you can click this button here and you can talk to me there. Uh, still kind of figuring out the whole Mastodon uh, world, but I am, I am there if you are uh, also there. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate your time and hopefully this was fun. And uh, again, if you, if you take this and run with it, I would absolutely love to hear from you. So hit me up. Um, all right, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And as always, of course, happy coding.